Hey gang, I thought I'd do something by impact just to help people win the fight and repair on these because there's a lot of misinformation out there. There's a lot of people basically just guessing. I mean, they're just guessing, they've got no information how to, how to repair these, so they're kind of losing the battle. So I thought I'd do something to turn the tables. Um, you have to excuse me, I need to keep the noise down because it's fairly late at night. I've got a typical impact card in front of me. It looks fairly simple, but people can spend days fixing these. Sometimes people give up and can't fix them at all. And it's a shame because the card itself, there isn't that many components on it. It's just the battery gets so many traces that people give in. And there's no diagrams or anything. There's no schematics available. People have looked for them, can't find them. And not much is known about the 603 or 616 U5 and U4 here. Or even how any of this works. So, I thought there's something about it. So, I'll tell you the back story. I was looking for a broken address line for the RAM to the CPU. And when I was tracing about, I thought at first I'd done something wrong with a couple of jump bars in the back of the PCB because the RAM connections weren't going where they weren't expecting them to. I lost about half a day on it. So I decided to trace them out and I made a few discoveries and already started to paint a picture of why people spend so long repairing these and can't fix them. And the first thing I did was I printed out the footprints for the RAM, which is typically a 6264 and the MC68000. It's a 68EC000. And I found that the, the connections for the RAM to CPU don't line up exactly. They're offset by one. For every pin in the RAM, for every address pin, it's one higher on the CPU. A0 goes to A1, A1 to A2, A2 to A3. And that's true for the entire address bus. It, the whole address bus available is like A0 to A22. And it translates to A1 to A23 on the CPU. Now a lot of people will tell me in the past, the security in the ROMs, the ROMs are encrypted, the address bits are scrambled. I started to believe them until I did this. Now I'm going to give you a tip. Download the manual for the processor. It's freely available online. Motorola and NXP and Freescale Semiconductor. They put it online for free. Because to fix one of these, you need to have a basic idea of how this works or you're going to get nowhere. So, if I turn this this way around. It matches that way around. That matches that way up. You can see it there. And that's all I did. I turned it upside down when I was tracing to make it e easier to find. But one of the things that was catching me out was A0. Has no connection to RAM, has no connection to ROM, has no connection to Edge Connector. I spent a while tracing that out and I couldn't find it. I tried a couple of different meters, couldn't find it, I tried brush tests. Couldn't find it, and oh, it drove me up the wall until I actually downloaded the manual and read it. This processor runs in 8 or 16-bit mode. In 8-bit mode, you'll find A0. In 16-bit mode, you won't. Because in 16-bit mode, A0 isn't going anywhere. The address bit boss is 16-bit mode. It's A1 to A23, and A0 is just driven high. It goes nowhere. A bloody nightmare trying to work that out on my own, and I bet it's without the manual. It's a nightmare, I bet, for a lot of people trying to work it out. So I thought I'd go one better than that. What I decided to do now, after that, and what you should do, let's put this over here. Once I traced out RAM to CPU, 
I traced out the entire edge connector. Now, what I did was I plugged this into an impact board in slot 3. And then it was easy enough just to stick a pr probe down slot 4. And measure from whatever pin I wanted on the, C the CPU card down to the relevant edge connector pin on the next slot. Because slot 4 matches slot 3. And for rows A and C, slot 2 matches slot 1 and so on. It took about 3 hours but it wasn't too tricky. And what I found was the whole row C as your data bus now. It goes this way, it goes this way up but the way I wrote it down is kind of back to the front of the way it is. It matches it this way around. This is row C here. And that would be pin 32. Mm. Yeah, I've rolled them backwards, but never mind. This is pin 1 here and pin 32 over here, so you just got to follow this di diagram here. So, all along this top row of pins, this is row C, is the whole data bus. It goes for D0 to D15. And you see that one of the RAM takes the first seven bits and the other RAM takes the second seven bits. You also see I've marked out certain pins that go like U4 pin 17, U4 pin 7. And that just corresponds to U5 and U4 on here. This is the... Uh, U5 is 603 and U4 is the 616. You've also got read-write pin goes through there. You've got pins called upper and lower data select. Uh, the traces go on to the collector pins for you. Q1. Sorry, the emitter pins, sorry, I got that wrong. Q1 and Q2. These here, they go through there. And others, you get the whole pin goes through. It's basically, to cut a long story short, you're not going to fix one of these cars unless you know what this, all these edge connector pins are. You need to know what these are because so many connections from these chips go to that edge connector. It's not just a case of where you have a main board and you're plugging a ROM card in. This isn't going to work unless these pins are here. So just, rem just remember from my diagram, and I'll put this into Excel the right way around. Just remember you've got pin... One here and pin 32 over here. So the likes of reset CPU would be on row, row C5, which is up here. So it'll be fifth pin along. So now we know all the edge connector. We need to know specific things about how these connect to here. Because if we know that, we'll know roughly what they do. I'm glad I took that step because boy did they paint one hell of a picture. Here we are. 603, 616. 603 here, U5, has one job to do. It's a data transfer controller. You see, it takes information from the edge connector, you see where I mark X card edge, any pin I mark X something is going to the edge connector. So XC6 is edge connector pin 6 row C. But you see we take pulses for the system clock, information for the edge connector. It takes information about the upper or lower data strobes and state of the read write pin. And all it does is it fires the DTAG pin to signal the CPU when the rest of the board wants to do a transaction with the processor. That's its only job. 616, which is U4, is an interrupt controller. And again, we just, we take information from the edge connector. We take information about the processor function codes. And believe it or not, the processor's got its own built-in user and administrator modes, but I'm not getting into that. 
That's a bit of a heady reading, reading it, but... Basically, you can... It's the same as like a copy of Windows. You can do more in administrator mode than you can do in user mode. But I think most of the programs run in user mode anyway, but... We send information about the function codes, we bring information up from the rest of the main board through the edge connector, and then this chip here sets the level of interrupt that the processor is going to see. And there's seven layers of priority. You've got a non-maskable interrupt, which is the maximum priority, which is like interrupt seven or something. It might be interrupt zero, might get that the wrong way around. And I believe this pin here we also set we also send an a signal back to the main board to say it's acknowledged interrupt vector. Yeah, I think that was acknowledged interrupt vector. So to cut a long story short, data controller, something about the direct memory access but not as advanced. Interrupt controller. This basically gives the CPU a gentlemanly handshake. This one Bust the entrance door down and says I'm coming in. And you can see why it's so, again, it's so important the edge connections there. And the connections we hear to the processor there because if you find, for example, all these pins are there, but this trace here, the D tag's broken, processor's never going to do anything. Not because your processor doesn't work, not because of the problem with ROM RAM, but simply because it's not seeing the handshake signal. And what you normally get there is you'll get everything pulsing away. All your data and address lines here. I mean, the card will look like it's completely working. You'll even in some cases, I believe, get the alarm tone for the sound card. And then nothing. It just sits dead. I've got a couple that do that. They, they alarm and then just sit dead. And you'll hear them occasionally pop through the speaker. And it's not that there's anything majorly wrong, it's just that 603 was bust. And DTAC was never being triggered. U4 unfortunately sits underneath the battery, so it always gets battered, and so do all the traces. But usually this is the one that will take you down. But I've seen this one suffering damage as well. You can test the card without this here. And you get some things going on, but as the DTAC pins never signaled, nothing will ever happen. But if this is missing, nothing will ever happen at all. I don't think you'll even get the alarm tone because you can't select the level interrupt. You can't tell it where a door's been opened or whether it's a software reset or it's a mains failure. Everything to do with that goes through this. I believe... But if your 24 volts line's missing, for example, you set an interrupt here to tell the, pro tell the program there's no 24 volt, don't start. Mm. So, this is the one usually I watch when I'm looking for, see if a card's going to boot up at all, because usually I watch this pin here, pin 9, this function code here. Processor will change will change these function codes as it's going about its business. And usually what will happen is it starts it starts up doing the first few lines of code in supervisor mode. And then you see this change as it goes it will go all the pins will go low as the CPU inserts a wait state. And I believe that's because it's waiting for this. I mean I might be wrong. I mean this is just supposition, but I mean, I'm no expert on these things, but this, I'm just going by what I've seen. You know, talking about the guessing again. At least it's, it's a much more educated guess now I know what these pins are doing. This goes high, pulse, low. It sits there low for three seconds, and then it starts fast pulsing and the, the board boots. If you don't see that go high, pulse, low, pulse, the board's not going to boot. Normally you get the dreaded alarm tone and then nothing. So... But as I said, I'm glad I, I'm glad I sat down and traced all these because now I know exactly what they do, and I can make a diagnosis a lot easier and troubleshoot better because I can make a I can diagnose the board faster, knowing what these do rather than no rather than just guessing. 
what all the pins might be and randomly and a lot of the time aimlessly probing to see what everything's going on. So I went one better than that. And I need to explain this in a part two because I'm running out of time, but I drew schematics for the whole card. Now they're not professional schematics, they're done Atari style, where I just do it a section at a time, but they're there. I even worked out how the battery works, things. Uh, I even discovered a few intriguing things about how it does ramp select, and I'll explain them in about 10 minutes when I clear out some space. <laughs> 